Hi again. I am going to be talking about the three dominant theoretical perspectives as a way to understand different forms of stratification. So I, on the exam, I may ask you to give an example of or analyze in terms of these perspectives the um, existence of gender or race as concepts. And I'll use the example of um, race when talking in this video. So first, the important part to know is like what would each of these theorists say about how the world works? So that's what these, that's what these paradigms are useful for, for talking about how does the social world work. And conflict theorists would argue that society functions and all, everything happening that we see in society is a product of conflict over resources, that there's limited resources and that people, um, groups of people based on ascribed or achieved characteristics are um, competing for those, access to those resources. And then um, functionalists would argue that the social world works in the sense that everything serves a purpose, that the concepts are interdependent, or structures are interdependent, behaviors are interdependent, um, in working towards equilibrium, the well-functioning society. So when something is dysfunctional, something um, happens, there's a response in another part of the system to correct that. And then third, the symbolic interactions on the micro-level um, perspective that examines how reality is shaped through interaction. So um, if we we're going to be talking about these three perspectives um, by invoking the concept of race, we could say that in what way does the existence of race, so not physiological skin differences, but like the concept of race that separates people based on skin groups into different categories, um, why does that exist? Um, and for a conflict theorist, they would argue that it's to create divi divisions between groups and that those group identities um, result in people fighting for resources because resources are distributed along the lines of race. So, and we can look back to the history of um, race in the United States to say that, okay, well, um, it's useful as a political tool to distribute citizenship or rights uh, to property and things like that, um, that without having that concept, we would have to find some other way to distribute resources or to maintain for people in positions of power to maintain their resources. So always it's the person who's in a position of power in terms of a racial or gender or economic hierarchy that gets to determine when how resources are distributed along lines, socially constructed lines of um, race and gender and class. That said, um, the existence of race as a concept then would be to um, facilitate the distribution of these limited resources. And that because um, there are so, uh, so few or there are a finite number of resources that um, belonging to different racial groups um, has implications for who can have what. And you can also think more recently so that um, historically in our country, really like how is race, um, how does race, its existence today, um, in what way does it operate? And we can say, well, maybe it's no longer built into our structures, but it creates divisions among people that maintain, um, that help to maintain resource divisions. So um, in terms of the example I used in class was the KKK member. Um, being upset about the non-white people for his economic position rather than maybe looking at the economic position of people who have the resources. So it's useful in that way, creating a sense false consciousness. Um, 
Okay, so in terms of functionalism, we could say that race is essential uh, because it serves a purpose. It um, helps to maintain the functioning of society, which because <laughs> because um, the structures of society, the institutions are interdependent, we could look at the economy, for instance. We could say that race was an essential concept, like we needed to have the concept of race in order to justify the distinctions or like our whole economic system was based on the idea that race is real. Uh, and I showed you the Scott Dredd um, Supreme Court case decision that highlights the judges saying, like, without this concept of race, the Founding Fathers would have been viewed um, really negatively if they were denying freedom to people that they viewed as full or as similar to them. So race was useful for um, supporting the economic system, which is an institution. And then as that changes, that we no longer have an economy based on slavery, we have other um, means by which we ensure um, a cheap labor force. Like we could argue that like poor education for people. Okay, so functionalists would highlight the ways in which um, race operates within structures to help maintain the stru the functioning of society. Whether that leads to good outcomes for everyone, that's not, um, that's not necessarily um, the case. But it does maintain the status quo or um, keeps things um, in equilibrium. And then the third perspective would be the symbolic interactionism, and we could say that race matters at um, an individual level because it shapes how we interact with people. Like We use race as a descriptor. I gave the example of the guy in the prison, the Asian man versus the lawyer. Um, so it's useful in that way. It creates um, an interaction and understanding that people are distinctly different. And it also gives people a group identity. So as a white person or a non-white person, for instance, you may feel some um, or develop belief systems around that, that you are some type of way or um, not one way, which is useful and um, how race continues to matter at an individual level. So hopefully that helps. The same thing can be done with gender then, like how does gender like the existence of gender, the usefulness of it, like what, how can we analyze it in terms of these three dominant perspectives that each have a different understanding of how the social world works. Okay, bye.